Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro, and I am so excited about today's tutorial. It is a viewer requested tutorial by Mark D. Hall, so thank you for the suggestion. We will be creating a really nice looking whip pan transition in motion that will allow us to actually set a customizable direction using some rigging. Let's get started. First, you're gonna wanna select the Final Cut transition. The next thing is you're gonna wanna set the resolution to something that you're aware of the pixel dimensions. So I'm gonna be working in 4K, but you can work in 1080. Then your frame rate, you're gonna probably wanna set it to what you typically work with. It's not absolutely vital, but it does help when you get into Final Cut for the transition to look how you expect it to look. So I typically work at 24, so I'm gonna set this to 2398. The duration is very important. You're gonna wanna set this to something very short. So you'll notice I've swapped this over to frames and I just have it at 15 frames. And I recommend you do something similar Similar, just pretty short and sweet. The first step in motion is we're gonna wanna take this transition B and actually extend the duration out to the full length of our clip and I accidentally went too long there so I can push I and that will set the end point here at the beginning. We are going to select transition B, go up into the inspector, go to properties and find the position property and we're gonna go into this X value here. We're gonna push that down arrow and we're gonna add the parameter behavior of link. We're gonna link the motion of transition A to transition B, and that will make our lives a little bit easier in the animation realm. So go ahead and drag transition A into this well here. And now wherever transition A moves on the X value, transition B will also move. Now what's important is as of right now, transition A and transition B are totally locked to each other. So they're gonna be right on top of each other. So what's important is that we actually move transition B, we set the offset to the side. So because this is a 4K project, I need to set the offset to 3840. So I'll set that to 3840. And that's because this is 3840 pixels wide. So now the offset is over here on the side. So now as I move transition A, transition B follows right along and they're just edge to edge. Okay, so that is gonna make our animation lives considerably easier down the road. From here, we can actually get into some of the animation values. So let's go ahead, take transition A. We are going to find the X position here. We'll add a keyframe and we'll go to right to before the transition A um, disappears and we're gonna add another keyframe. And then we're going to set the value here to negative 3840, and that will push it right off to the side. And I'm actually gonna grow the size of the keyframe editor. And it's a little complicated to work with, but just a couple quick tips in case you're having some trouble. If it happens to zoom in a way where you can't actually see the curves that are happening, you can push this button here and that will actually expand it so that the curves are the size of your box here. So it's a little easier to see. So this has already actually got a very nice um, slope to it. Now, sometimes when I animate this, I'm not sure why, it doesn't actually have like this nice bezier curve. So if that's the case, just find this end keyframe, right click on it, and you can set it to ease out, ease in, um, or both. So I'm just gonna set this to ease in, and now it's gonna have this slope. So it's gonna start off and just slow down a bit as it gets here to the end. And it's just gonna add a little bit of fluidity to the animation. Or if you want that kind of S-curve look, you can also right click it and set the interpolation to Bezier and that should get you in a good spot. So the last thing we're gonna do for this particular transition is we need to add some motion blur. Now we could in fact come up to render and set the motion blur value, but this is gonna add a lot of extra computing power that really doesn't need to happen. So what we're gonna do is actually jump into our filters. We're gonna set the blur to directional blur. And now as I blur this, you'll see it's blurring almost like it's motion blur off to the side. And it's just a fake motion blur, but it's gonna work a lot faster. So the very first frame, we want it to be at zero. We'll add a keyframe, and then as it ramps up, we'll find this is about where it's going to be moving the fastest. So that's where we want the most amount of motion blur. 
So we'll just drag this up till we're at a happy spot. I usually like around 300 or so. And so now as it's moving off, you'll see that it has that nice blur. But transition B does not have that blur. So let's go ahead and let's set this directional blur A and then we can duplicate it with command D and we can drag that into transition B here. And let's rename this to directional blur B. They're going to have the same blur values all the way through, but as transition B is ending, we want the blur to die off. So let's go ahead and extend out the blur here, just a few more frames. And now we can add in a keyframe a little bit later and set that to zero. Now I don't really like how it's just such straight direct lines. So let's go ahead and right click, set the ease to both. And now it will have this nice curve to it. And now it will slowly fall out of the directional blur. And we can actually, let's just pull this frame back a little bit. There we go. Great, now we have a whip pan to the left. Now what's really cool and something that was suggested by Mark and I didn't actually know you could really do this until I started uh, diving into this tutorial, but we're going to create a rig so that we can set the direction that this is happening. And it's actually quite simple. So go ahead and select transition A, find your X value here and we're going to click that down arrow, add to rig, create new rig, and we're gonna select add to new pop-up. Now we're going to rename this first one to whip left and it's just important that you name everything so you know exactly what's happening. Then we'll jump to snapshot two and we'll rename that to whip right. So now we're going to wanna to jump into this edit mode and what happens is it's going to automatically create variables so that as we change things between these two modes, the parameters will be adjusted accordingly. So let's go ahead, we're in this whip right mode. We can jump into the edit mode by pushing that start. It's gonna give us this little rig box. Um, you can just push that to the side and not worry about it. Go ahead and jump into the link here and we're gonna set this to negative 3840. And now our, our transition B is actually on the left hand side. Now we can jump to transition A. We're gonna jump to that next keyframe and just reverse the keyframes by setting it to positive 3840 and now it will be moving the other direction. And what's great is the directional blur actually happens to line up pretty well. Now it might be lasting a little bit long, so let's just shorten up the amount of time that that lasts so it's a little bit more realistic. Now we can just push stop rig edit mode, jump into our pop-up, and now if I select the whip left, you can see it goes to the left side, whip right, it goes to the right side. There's this snapshot three, and if you wanted to, you could animate it going up and down and any direction you really wanted and not have to drag on um, individual transitions, which is really nice. But if you don't want to add those extra transitions, you can just push this minus button and now it has whip left and whip right. The last couple things you're gonna wanna do, let's go ahead and rename this pop-up to be whip direction. And that is what's going to show up in Final Cut Pro. So that's just important to name that. And then come over here, click this down arrow and push publish and now this parameter will show up in Final Cut as long as we publish this whole motion project. So if I push Command S, or you can go up to File and Save, and we can set this to Whip Pan, and then you can set that in whatever category you want, the Final Cut Bro, and I will push Publish. So let's jump into Final Cut to see how it is working. Once you are in Final Cut Pro, just jump on over to your transitions and you can search up Whip Pan. And there it is. We can drag that onto our timeline and let's play back and see how it looks. It's all right. It, uh, it's getting the job done, but I feel like we could definitely work with the keyframes a bit in motion. So we'll get into that in just a second. But take note, our lovely published parameters are up here and we can change it to whip right now. And, uh, and you can change it accordingly, which is really, really nice and uh, saves you from having like a hundred different transition types that all do almost the same thing, 
but not quite. So let's go ahead, jump back into motion, and see if we can tweak the animation just a little bit to get it looking a little bit smoother. So I think some of the, the main area where this is not looking too realistic is this line between the two isn't blurred enough, so you're able to really see the transition happening. So let's see if we can fix some of that. We'll just jump into our directional blur A, go into our inspector, and let's go to the point where it is the blurriest, and let's drag that up a considerable amount. Probably, let's try 750. And uh, this is just an arbitrary number, but hopefully it helps. And let's set the ease in on that. And on this end, it's already looking better. Let's jump into directional blur B and we will do the same thing. Let's see if we can really punch that up to 750. Now, unfortunately, because of the rig, we're gonna actually have to make this change on both ends of the spectrum. But I wanna do one other thing that I think will help this transition just a little bit more. So let's go to transition A, and if we're looking at the animation here, I think we need one keyframe that just barely overshoots the end animation. So what we'll do, We'll go over one more frame and we will click this down arrow and we can click add and that will create one more keyframe. So it is at 3840. Let's go back to where it originally landed and let's just push that to like maybe three, maybe 70, let's see. Yeah, so if you, if you watch, you can see how it goes just a little bit past so it almost it's almost like the camera has to re-catch up to where it should have originally landed and let's drag this out one more frame if you click it and hold shift it'll stay on the same axis that it was originally so let's see if that works there we go that's looking a little more fluid to me now one concern is there's this edge here and it's just barely going past our video. So let's see if we can fix that really quickly. One way we could do that just for the sake of time is creating a clone layer and we'll just push K and let's drag this under transition B and then we will click and drag this and just barely bring the edge back. So that's just barely gonna be there and uh, you won't actually notice it in the final edit and it's gonna really smooth out this animation. So let's go ahead, push Command S and save that. And which direction is that? That's whip right. So let's go back into Final Cut. We will delete this transition and reapply it and let's see how that looks. That's looking considerably better in my opinion. Now if we speed this up, I think it'll look even better than that. Great, I think that is getting to a really great place and I think this is a very usable transition. Now, normally I would wanna make all of those changes before I create the rig so that I don't have to duplicate them into the other side, if that makes sense. Thank you so much, Mark D. Hall, for suggesting this tutorial. I really do appreciate it and it actually helped me learn some new stuff about motion. And thank you everybody else for taking the time to watch this video. If it was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button and consider subscribing as I have so many more tutorials planned for the future and I have new videos every single week. Thank you so much and I will see you next week.